the wall is obvious. So if that's the midbrain, what is the structure below it? Forebrain. Look at me. Look, look. The brain bends down. Look at the drawing. Bends down. So if the knife blade passes through it this manner, you're going to see midbrain, forebrain. Now, why are you going to be sure that that's the forebrain? Which structure grows out from the forebrain on each side? Look at it. That's optic cuffs. Optic cuffs and optic vesicles and see where it's connected. These are absolute vertebrate markers. Period. Okay? You got a vertebrate? You see that. Period. That's the way it works. There are specific genes to be mentioned later that do that. Just as our genes that make you your testes, testes, and your ovaries, ovaries. I mean, it's all there. The rules are not going away. So we're setting up the pattern. So when I lecture, I'm going to say, remember, didn't I do that this morning? I said, remember when you looked at the testes? I said, remember when you looked at the ovary? We showed them to you for a reason. Then I came back and I dealt with the molecular and cellular evidence, some of which you're going to read. Whole semester, that's what we're doing. So again, go back up to the board. Where is the floor of the forebrain? Right there is the floor of the forebrain. What does that produce? Go back to the sagittal section. I want an answer to my question. Floor of forebrain. Floor of diencephalon. Infundibulum is the correct answer. Infundibulum, touch infundibulum. Immediately ventral to the infundibulum, there's an epidermal, ectodermal structure. He's putting his finger on it. What's it called? A denohypothesis, which makes in the adult the anterior pituitary. Every item I just mentioned is on every practice. Every item we have mentioned here will be on every practical in sagittal or cross section, our choice. You should understand it both ways. Is that true, Michael? Don't we, don't we go through, we have a checkoff list. Did you give them the checkoff list? You have the checkoff list. Okay? So you know precisely what our intentions are. What you have to do is build in your mental imaging file here, in your brain. You have to build a pattern in your brain. Your biggest problem is seeing it in two dimensions when it's a three-dimensional machine. Okay. It's that conversion, two to three dimensions. So go over again what you see up here. Where's stomodeal coming in there? Well, that's the edge of stomodeal toward the gut, okay? And those two bumps, ventral bumps there, are adhesive planes, and they will never, well, that's near the adhesive planes, and they're never going to be on the exam. All right, so those adhesive planes, there's an example in your textbook of importance, but we don't normally refer to it in the lab because adhesive glands that amphibians have, you don't have those. Okay, so that's why I'm not concerned. So I see mesencephalon, prosencephalon, optic evaginations to make cups. Where's the retina? Where's the retina? I'm speaking to them. Where's the retina? Which structure forms the retina? Put that on the table. Show them. That cup makes the retina. The cup makes the retina. Where's the lens cornea? It's the epidermal ectoderm that makes the lens cornea on the outside. Please make note, these are basic vertebrate mechanisms. They all do it the same way, more or less. They all use the same signal in the eye. It's called PAC-6. PAC-6. Where's the adenohypothesis versus the infundibulum? Touch the adenohypothesis. Look at it. Right there is the adenohypothesis. Okay? So in that section, there's a lot of information. There's a good deal of it. 